I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rukhak Radash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles of the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who are the house of David reborn again in this last generation. Inshallah to the 130 Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk about the mark of the beast. This is Revelations 13 and 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score and six, six six six. There's this video that came out with this brother, um, Kodar Shapat Sabi. Uh, he uh, released this video, and it shows uh, it's a new BBC show called Years to Years and Years, and it's basically it's a kind of like a glimpse into the future for. Uh, like the next like a couple of uh, decades or to 2030 and it goes into a bunch of folly from gay marriage to uh, the RFID implant to uh, Trump becoming king of America and all this type of type of uh, craziness but this scene here particularly is pretty far out it kind of shows you how uh, the leaders of the world basically the, the rulers of this world who are the ones who control all the media control all the the pulp culture narratives um, the ideas that they're pushing to society now I'm gonna go in it later in this video and show you some other examples how they've been pushing this idea but let's go ahead and watch this will you call me sorry will you call me you mean telephone yes where now this is why I wanted to have lunch. Can you just find me? Now? Hello, Bethany speaking. Hello. Are you phoning for Bethany? Yes. What are you doing? This is Bethany. Can you hear me? Well, you're right in front of me. But can you hear me down the phone? Oh, my gosh. This is me. On the phone, I had it implanted. My hand is the phone. I can walk and talk because I'm on the phone. The phone inside my hand. I am the phone. This is what phones are going to be from now on. I have integrated. Thank you for your call. Subdermal implants. They charge themselves with motion like a self-winding watch. And it's on the 22 network. I get signal across 95% of UK mainland, 98 by next year. When I phoned you, it was ringing. You were ringing. That's the speaker. So small. Okay, but when did you get this done? That course in Winchester. I had one finger done every night. I still need to use a handset to phone out. Look. Hello? Hi. Okay, but look, I can't believe you had surgery without telling me. Skin plants. Not surgery, and I knew you'd be cross. But I'm 18, and you had that tattoo when you were 18, and it's the same sort of thing. And I wanted to ask you, will you do me a favor? What? Will you tell Dad? Oh, sweet. Please, will you tell Dad for me? Now, I want to go ahead and show you another video uh, that I found on this, right? Just to show you the folly that they're pushing and, and specifically on this chick here. Now, in this scene here, uh, first of all, it's at 144, so that shows you it's spiritual. Now, her parents, the Edomite father and the Jake mom, um, are telling the Edomite daughter that they're accepting her... Um, choice of being trans now they believe that she means transsexual 
but she's going to tell him right now that she doesn't want to be transsexual. She wants to be transhuman. Basically, she no longer wants to be in this flesh. She basically wants to melt her, her soul with the beast. So let's go ahead and uh, show you this little spiel for the uh, acceptance of transhumanism that they're pushing out to the, to the uh, people. We'll be happy. <laughs> No, I'm not transsexual. Oh. Is that not the word now? But you said trans. Is... What did they call you then? I'm not transsexual. I'm transhuman. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. They keep changing the words. I don't know the difference. I don't want to change sex. No, sure. We, we say gender now, don't we? Sorry. I said I'm not comfortable with my body. So I want to get rid of it. This thing. All the arms and legs and every single bit of it. I don't want to be flesh. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to escape this thing. I've become digital. What do you mean? They say one day soon they'll have clinics in Switzerland where you can go and you'll sign a form and they'll take your brain and download it into the cloud. And your body? Recycled. Into the earth. So you want to kill yourself? I want to live forever as information because that's what transhumans are, Mum. Not male or female. Better. Where I'm going, there's no life or death. There's only data. I will be data. So you see right there, that's the uh, folly that they're, they're pushing to tell people, like, you know, you could live forever. And you see Esau, who would be the uh, modern-day Caucasians, who biblically are known as the Edomites, who have been prophesied to be the last ruling uh, nation in the world before the second coming of the Lord, and how they would have the world in, in destruction and, and have the world basically upside down is pushing this idea that you can live forever or you could basically enter into heaven without a God. Now, this is what the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, had to say about that. This is John 1, uh, 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the, sh is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the, port the porter openeth, and the sheep heareth his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sh sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger will not follow him, but will flee from him. And they know not the voice of, and for they know not the voice of strangers. And this was a parable that Yahweh spoke to the people, and he was basically talking about entering into the kingdom of heaven. Now, he, like he had said earlier, let me see if I can find it real quick. There it is. And then and it tells you here. And it, let me just continue. And this parable spake Yahweh Shai unto them, but they understood not what things they they were which he spake unto them. Then said Yahweh Shai unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. And I come that they may have life, and that they may have have it more abundantly. Now, um, so back to this point here. You see, this woman, she wants to enter in to the, uh, into heaven, or have that eternal life, and not die by by her own device, right? By the device that the devil is pushing pushing through to her. And <clears throat> so there's ways to get through through the other barrier, right? To get past through life as science has, has shown us. But again, remember, we are being shown only the results that, that this devil wants to show us. So 
more likely there's a, there's a lot of deception behind it. However, that doesn't negate the fact that the Lord straight up said that anybody else who f does happen to find out another way into heaven, that they're thieves and robbers and they're basically going to be tossed out because there's only one legitimate way to get into heaven and that's through through him as he is the sheepfold he is the entrance into heaven now now what are some of the prerequisites to get into that door one you have to be of the line of israel meaning you have to be of the line of a negro latino native indian through your father's line so you know off the bat that would uh cut this girl go right off because as you can see her father you know let's just you know you know, put it on on the face. If if he's not like a confusion of face, which more than likely is not, because in this show, this they kind of follow this guy's family from his old grumpy ass grandma, all the way down to his uh, younger gay uh, uh, married freaking uh, brother. So this family is a bunch of fucking weirdos and stuff like that. They're just straight up Edomites, right? They have no spiritual inclination, at least in this show. So that being that this chick here would have no acceptance into the kingdom of heaven because again the kingdom of heaven is only for the israelites plain and simple that is the big deception that the devil has tricked the world into believing that it could be for anybody now let's go and move on as i was telling you they've been trying to push this whole subdermal implant into uh into our reality Right, as far as getting chip implants and other stuff, they even brought it out in a popular movie recently, 2012, called Total Recall, the remake of it. And let me let's go ahead and see that scene now. That's for the most part the uh, how they showed that in, in recent movies and again they're starting to bring that out again because just like we're gonna watch this other video here these these small uh, Im impressions upon our media just start impacting reality so this is true life here this is an actual uh, documentary on motherboard showing some guy who uh, I think this was back in 2013 so just a year later he went and got a, a retarded ass implant into his arm you're gonna see how stupid it looks but you're just gonna see how this has gotten into the minds of people and how people are willing to do these idiotic things uh, to, to, to push forward this agenda of the devil hey man hey how's it going uh, how's it going with you how did it go it went well. It went well. A lot of pain, you know. A lot of, a lot of grunting. A lot of. Yeah. It's pretty large. Yeah. It is big. Yeah, as we expected. You know that sort of thing. You know, obviously you got some wrinkling in the skin. If you can take a look over on the side, it's you know, pinched there, but it's closed. It's good. You know, it's working. So, uh, want to see? Sure, sure. Let's demonstrate that thing. All right. Let's see here. Let me get this. Let's see, all right, uh, connect to device. Make sure this connects. And connecting, connected. 
So let's uh, go ahead and turn on the light. Can you, can you show me the, the transmitting of the data? Is that, yeah. that via Bluetooth, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me reconnect. There's some data for you. And that's, uh, you know, so. One more. Bam. That's so. We're going to leave it on there. So, you see, this just goes to show you how depraved a lot of these people are. This tattoo that he has on his hands is a DNA column and it's basically surrounded by a mechanical cog because this guy here, when you watch this this uh, this documentary, it basically follows people who are what's known as biohackers. They want to augment their, their bodies to be like this chick where they want to, uh, they want to be one with the, I'm gonna with escape the beast. This thing and become digital. They want to escape this body. Now, again, the reason why these people feel that way is one is because the Lord didn't give them the the love of His love. He didn't choose them, and they're more likely they're trying to escape their judge their, their coming judgment. Their soul at least feels that way, which is why they have that desire. But I want to read this. This is Second Corinthians eleven and three. But I fear least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai the Mashiach. You see, because right now as as this devil is out here, um, as, he, as he's out here, you know, pushing out these, these uh, ideas, like for example in this video here, you have this woman uh, on, on a TED talk. This is TEDx, so it's a little, basically, these are like university uh, professors or students who have done theses on this or, or, or whatnot. But this is the idea that has been pushed out to our, rea to our reality, so namely to Eve, right? And, and to people who ha do not have the full armor of God on. They think that this is a benefit and they think that they're going to prosper in this and that they're going to be able to go up into heaven or into that immortal state uh, without uh, God's help. They think they can do it by themselves. But I guarantee you it is not as off the grid as it might seem. Today, tech companies and scientists all around the world work on the development of technologies that cross a new frontier, the frontier of our skin. It is very likely that during our lifetime, some of us are going to integrate some technological device into our heads. There are two basic ingredients that we would need to make such a device. The first one is all about perception. We would have to turn our eyes into this place in order to melt our perception of the outside world, our front yard, the metro station, with our virtual world, our Facebook and our email account. This blending of the two worlds we live in is called augmented reality. Already today, you can buy glasses like Microsoft's HoloLens that do exactly that. They display some text information or some funny colorful arrows into your visual field that help you, say, install a washing machine in your home. In the future, instead of using these kind of nasty glasses, the display could be integrated into an elegant contact lens that is implanted into the eye. Currently, Google, Samsung and Sony are working on the development of smart lenses that project images on the eye or that allow you to make photos using eye movements. Let's have a look at the second ingredient. When we use our phone in daily life, we do not only want to perceive information on it, but we want to interact with that information. We want to scroll through pages, search things in the web, send messages. To do that, we use our thumbs on the screen. Would it be possible to do the same thing using our thoughts? There is no such device that looks at your brain and recognizes that you think, damn it, I forgot Peter's birthday today, call him now. But what is possible is to recognize basic building blocks of your thoughts. For example, we can say, given the activity in your brain, 
there is a 74% chance that you are thinking about the letter B right now. The technique to do that is called brain computer interface and it is applied mainly for paralyzed patients that can use the interface to communicate with the outside world without moving at all. Using their thoughts, they can write or control a cursor on a computer screen. In order to do that, however, they have to wear a cap with electrodes on their head. They need to be wired to a computer and the set of things that they can actually do with it is pretty limited. So it is not really practical to use for everyone in everyday life. But there is a bunch of research going on that tries to make the same technology applicable for healthy people and to integrate it into the body. Last year, Silicon Valley... So there you go. This is Revelations 16 and 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and, and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped the image. You see, these people who do this shit, man, who right now they're, they're, they're experimenting and they're, you know, on the fringe of society and, you know, they, they have that, rebel, that techno-rebellious spirit about them. They, they think they're doing this to be cool. They eventually are going to get messed up because it tells you, man, there's going to be a grievous sore upon those who who take that chip, right, and accept that chip into the, their hands because that's going to be just one of the punishments of those who who do accept it. Now, the ultimate punishment, the 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 crucial spiritual punishment is is this. This is um, Revelations 14 and 9, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Because this is ultimately what's the uh, judgment that's going to come for those people who do take the mark and join themselves onto this beast system. You see, us, us Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, we were created from the beginning of the of the of the uh, of time. To now when we have fulfilled this whole filtering mechanism we know as life we were put on this earth to go through the system to be filtered out to to seek righteousness and to seek our our back to our origins back to the fault to the father and and follow and worship him right so that way we can receive the ultimate promise of true immortality and and and, and to be gods right but those others, those others who have fallen by the wayside, who have not, who have lost faith, lost the, the true understanding of what, of the instruction that was given to us, they have accepted these false promises from the from Satan, who is basically in, who is, who is being controlled by the, the Most High, to do exactly that, to deceive the people, so that way the Lord knows who truly is His. But again, for those who do fall for the wayside, when who have lost patience, who have lost their way, and who are, who are too proud to humble themselves to seek out the truth, this is their ultimate uh, end. This is the lake of fire described in the uh, end of Revelations that awaits the sinners and the, the two-thirds of the people who will not turn back to the Lord. So, hopefully this video was edifying, Akim. Hopefully it's showing you that we're even closer now than what we had thought before. The mark of the beast, it's, uh, it's knocking at the door and it's here already. Now they're just trying to get everybody to accept it. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kodesh. Double honors to my teachers, the Apostle Great Millstone. Shalom.